you did it, Arizona. You showed the world that baseball creates passion in the desert. The bright lights of All-Star Week are gone, but the images and memories will last a lifetime. Just days removed from being the epicenter of the baseball world, keep the energy in the ballpark and build on it. The Diamondbacks are in the hunt tonight. The stretch run begins. A pennant to chase. Come on now. Time to make some more memories. The exhibition game and all that followed with it has now left town. It's time to play for real. The second half is underway here on Fox Sports Arizona. And the Los Angeles Dodgers begin a 10-game homestand for the Arizona Diamondbacks. All the action is brought to you by our good friends and partners with Blue Bell Ice Cream. Now, the Giants got to work early. They did so against the San Diego Padres, a late-game victory last night over the Padres. So the Diamondbacks, with some work to do, simply put, just take care of your own house and keep the pressure on the San Francisco Giants. Alongside all-star ambassador Luis Gonzalez, my name is Darren Sutton, and bearing that title, quickly, some of your brief recollections. How do you think Arizona do? Oh, I think they did fantastic. What a, what a great week. I mean, the fans were into it. The players were into it. It was just a lot of fun. All right, the business of baseball. The Diamondbacks right away have addressed their roster. A couple of, I think, dramatic changes because you take a look at first base. Brandon Allen, he isn't starting tonight, but he will see a majority of the time. And Jeff Blum, a utility look to the roster now. Yeah, Jeff Blum is a guy who's going to help this team out overall. He's been a guy who's come off the bench. He plays well. He gives you veteran stability. Brandon Allen's a guy who deserves to be called up. He's having a fantastic year in AAA, and I know he's going to come up here and do well. So trying to find some more offense, Kirk Gibson spoke of it, even though he thinks, Gibson said anyway, that pitching will be the difference. So let's talk about pitching right out of the gates because Joe Saunders has pitched really effectively as a true number three now. His last couple of months have been very dependable. Yeah, he really has. As the temperature is heated up, so has Saunders. He's pitched very well out there his last ten starts, as you can see there. 6-2 and two record. We're hoping that he continues the trend here in the second half. Now on the flip side, Clayton Kershaw, who at some point will have one, maybe two Cy Young trophies on that mantle. He's a gifted young pitcher. He really is, son. I mean, this guy's a fantastic young man. He's getting better, and he's still at a very tender age of 22 or 23 years old. All right, so the Diamondbacks, as we've mentioned, they realize as they look to deal with Kershaw, will have to pitch right there with the teams like the San Francisco Giants. So when we come back, Jody Jackson will join us. She will address just what Gibson has been talking about, the starting rotation, because with pitching being the key, a move was made before the game. Jody will address it, then it's the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. Gonzo and I with the call.
ice cream. The D-backs start the second half of a 10-game homestand. The Los Angeles Dodgers in town. Jody Jackson with you on the field just outside the Diamondbacks dugout. Darren Sutton and Luis Gonzalez told you about some of the changes already on this roster. Brandon Allen, Jeff Blum coming up. Well, we've got more maybe. And Kirk Gibson, it's our Geico quote of the game, talking about the last 70 games of this season and maybe some changes to the back end of the rotation. It is our Geico quote. There are people down there that maybe deserve an opportunity and they may get it. It is not the first half anymore. You got to love it. It's time to get after it. So, yes, there will be changes in the Brewers series. Barry Enright will throw on Tuesday. Josh Kohlmenter will remain the starter on Monday. Zach Duke in the bullpen for now. But Enright was sent down May 5th, but he's gone 8 and 2 with a 4.29 ERA in Reno. Can't read too much into the ERA. Of course, a small ballpark there and the elevation in Reno. So Barry Enright will get his shot. Gibson saying more production from the back end of the rotation will help the bullpen getting the ball to David Hernandez and J.J. Putz. So the second half about to get underway. And yes, the All-Stars still in action here at Chase Field. That's right, Justin Upton and Miguel Montero. They were out here for the All-Star festivities. They're looking for some more cheers tonight from the hometown crowd against the Dodgers. Stay with us. River Casino's place launch with your Players Club card at any Gila River Casino. You could win $2,000 to $20,000 right away. Right now, get to Jack in the Box, where for a limited time, Jack's really big chicken sandwich combo, it's back, and it's only $3.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. Southwest Airlines' new rapid rewards, unlimited reward seats with no blackout dates. Well, it's good to be back at the ballpark. Regular season action now. And congratulations to the great state of Arizona and to these Diamondbacks and baseball fans for how they celebrated the game over the last handful of days here at Chase Field. And though that game counted for home field advantage in the World Series, these games count for a chance to get to the World Series and to get to the postseason for the Diamondbacks. Luis Gonzalez and I, along with Jody Jackson, thank you for inviting us into your home this evening. And we can honestly say that we miss talking baseball with you. Joe's making his 19th start of the year. He'll face Rafael for call Juan Uribe and Andre Ethier. We'll give you the entire starting lineup here in a bit. We're underway in the second half with strike one right at the knees. The numbers this season on Joe Saunders. He has dipped that ERA below four with the solid work that we spoke of in our open. Hacked and popped up into the seats it goes. Take it a step further, Gonzo. In his last five outings, his ERA is just over two. 
Yeah, he's really pitched fantastic here as of late, and we're hoping that he continues that trend here. Is it more early strikes, or what have you seen? I think it's just getting the confidence with this team and, and feeling his knack to where he belongs. I know last year he came over in the trade, and he felt real good coming in and then finding his way again. New coaching staff, new players. He's a ground ball pitcher on a backhand that play is made on the ground. Rafael Furcal hitting just 185 this season, battling injuries at the top of the order. He's retired. Uribe having an awful year as well, statistically anyway. It's Ethier and Kemp, a couple of all-stars. Juan Rivera, former Angel, comes over from Toronto. James Loney heating up. Deanna Navarro, Jamie Carroll, the glue with the Dodgers, and Clayton Kershaw. He bats ninth, and he's a solid hitting pitcher. Don Mattingly learning baptism by fire in his first year as the manager. I mean, there is all of the off-the-field news about the Dodgers and their struggles with regard to their ownership, the McCourt family. But for Mattingly, he's got to keep the focus on baseball. Yeah, he does, and he's had to battle with a lot of guys here with injuries, as you talked about earlier, for a call, missing 63 games with a bad thumb and a left oblique. So when you have your leadoff hitter and your key guy in the lineup go down like that, that leaves a huge hole for you out there in the lineup. They thought they'd have more pitching. Garland injured. Vicente Padilla injured. I mean, these Dodgers, I think, as Uribe takes outside, I don't think anybody was penciling into them into the fall classic, but I think a lot of people thought they'd be a sleeper successful team. And, yeah, and the consistency that they've had in the last couple years, you would expect them to be at the top of the leaderboard, and they're really not there. They've struggled through a lot of obstacles this season. They've been hot pitching-wise. We'll explain that when Kershaw gets out there to go to work. There is a story of Juan Uribe. It's been a... A consistent down year. I mean, a slumping season on 3 1, back legs it and fouls it off. But he hasn't been able to get it going. No, he really hasn't. They brought him over here to try to be a steady Eddie in the lineup, and he he's another guy who hasn't been, been able to do anything for this Dodger club. Three and two the count. Again, big swing, dips underneath that baseball. Easy chance. For Chris Young and CY puts it away, run right on top of that beautiful All Star Game logo in center field. Let's take a look defensively. It's brought to you by David Robleski and Associates. It's Bloomquist, Young, and Upton. An infield of Roberts, Drew Johnson with Nady at first. You'll see a lot more of the look over there at first base with a different look. There's that beautiful logo. Isn't that a thing? I mean, just a just a pretty logo in center field and. Brent Trenbeth, what a what a great job he did as that one is slapped by an all-star down the line and a foul ball. Andre Ethier. Grant keeping this field together, Gonzo, not only through the home run derby in the all-star game, but I had a chance to come out here and MC some sponsor events. There were folks, there's Grant, what a job he did. There were folks playing baseball at 6.30 in the morning on this field, and it went on all day. Yeah, a lot of credit to Grant and his staff out there. They were out here countless hours. A lot of activities going on behind the scenes that fans really don't know about, and he's kept this field in tremendous shape. Over the outside, but missed the corner. One and one the count to Andre Ethier. Ethier a chance to come sleep in his own bed and play in the All-Star game. He told me before the game it meant the world to him to have the opportunity to play in the Phoenix game, the Arizona All-Star game. He was quiet before the break, though, just three for 20 heading into the break. Well, he got off to the hot start with a 30-game hitting streak to get out of there, and when you could build that cushion, he got cold for a while, as he did right there swinging through the pitch. He goes down with a breaking ball. Saunders picks up where he left off. We roll on. Bottom of the first is next. The talented southpaw ready.
Jack's manager with his starting lineup today, certainly with some different looks, as we told you, brought to you by Southwest Airlines, like Willie Bloomquist in there against the tough lefty. The tough assignments, truly, are for Kelly Johnson, Stephen Drew, and Miguel Montero, all left-handed hitters in there against Clayton Kershaw. Joe Saunders bats in the nine slot. And we speak of Clayton Kershaw. When you were a Dodger, Luis Gonzalez, he was still coming up through the ranks. The scary part as we take a look at his degree adrenaline numbers this season, the scary thing about it is he's still getting better. Yeah, he really is. He was a very impressive young kid, very mild-mannered. He goes about his business quietly and gets the job done. Out of Dallas, Texas, young Texan. He was a first-round pick in 2006, seventh pick overall. And a fastball. You'll see a ton of those as that one is fired in right at the belt to Willie Bloomquist. Making his 33rd start of the season. As that one is high. And as a starter, Willie hitting 272. He's got 37 hits in those 33 starts with an on base of 320. When he comes in as a backup off the bench, those numbers not nearly as great as they are as a starter for Willie. So now you have Willie Bloomquist who can kind of play anywhere. You have Jeff Blum who can kind of play anywhere and who's a switch hitter. Ryan Roberts certainly has the willingness and ability to do so. Kirk Gibson speaking of the versatility. That's why he made some of these decisions. Fought off to the right side. Hugs the line. Foul ball. The, yeah, when, the reason I mentioned that, Gonzo, and sorry, <laughs> is I think everybody thought, well, maybe Willie Mopena stays, but... Gibson wanted a little more versatility. Yeah, and I think, you know, Willie Moe is a great addition to this ball club. A lot of power coming off the bench. But when you have guys that can play multiple positions out there, when you get deeper into ball games, you're going to want those guys to throw them out there in positions. You don't want to be handcuffed and not being able to throw a guy out there to play defense. And that's the man right there that I think will be watched very closely. That's Sean Burroughs. As Bloomquist takes a pitch high and away. Gibson mentioning before today that he expects Burroughs to continue to work on and have the ability to play in the outfield. He said he can play either side of the infield for me, and he needs to continue to hit. That was the name that probably it came down to those two in the end. Popped up out front, looked like a changeup. That one with a slide is a souvenir. Again, we, we talked about it coming on the air. And you hope, I guess, that Juan Miranda seizes his opportunity now in AAA to fight his way back. Yeah, I mean, he, he gets a second chance going down to AAA, and obviously Brandon Allen deserved the call-up. He's been playing very well in AAA, and uh, there you see the, the guys already <laughs> welcoming him to the club has no idea there. Well, what a pretty piece of hitting. What an at-bat by Willie Bloomquist. Fouled off some tough hits. Looked poor on a couple of them that he just hung around, but hung in there. Good as a starter out there, as we told you. There you see a pitch. He kind of inside out to the right side. Stays on the ball for a base hit to right field. It's a nice plate appearance right there. And more importantly, he's gotten Kershaw to already throw seven pitches in that as, at the first batter. So now Kelly Johnson. Boy, how long is that cup going to stay on Brandon Allen's head there? Yeah, it's very interesting, that cup. I mean, really, no idea. So how, how do they get that to stay? Is there a little bit of gum I'm around sure, that? I'm sure there's a little bubble gum on there. I mean, there's some intelligence that goes into that. And the key is, I think, the surrounding fans. They have to be loyal to the practical joke. Kelly waves at a fastball. Owen won the count, fouled that one into the catcher's mitt because the big temptation is you settle in with your hot dog and your cold beverage and you, hey, what's that on your head? And then you'd ruin it. There you see the fans down there in that box right next to Brandon Allen pointing at it. See, those are good fans. They, they can't, they can point, but they can't tell it. Pitch is high. One and one the count to Kelly Johnson. Now Kershaw, a, a strikeout pitcher. This is a, a young man that throughout his professional career, this is 103 major league starts. He averages more than a strikeout per inning. Yeah, and he has the great curveball. He's got a big overhand curveball that's very deadly to those left-handed hitters. 
Meantime, it keeps you honest at 95 on the hands. Is that curveball a big change in velocity, too? It is. I mean, he's not your average guy. I, he, he's an exceptional left-handed pitcher. That's why you got to be very careful who you pick and choose to go in there. He could put these left-handers in a slump in a hurry. His changeup's about 86. When you throw that fastball 91 to 95 miles an hour, that's a huge difference up there because you're gearing up for that fastball. Kelly trying to keep that shoulder loaded in there. Is that one? There's the pitch that dives away. That looked like a slider. Two and two of the count. There's another left handed here to the top step, Stephen Drew. And he's watching very carefully what situations to count, who's on first, what's he throwing in certain spots right there, trying to figure out when he gets up to the plate, if he's in this situation, what pitches he's going to see. Kelly, two of nine career against Kershaw. Kershaw with a pretty good move. Both of these pitchers, Joe Saunders and Clayton Kershaw, control the running game pretty effectively. As a matter of fact, Kershaw has three pickoffs. And he's just a kid in the big leagues. He's got 22 career pickoffs. Three this season. But Bloomquist takes off anyway. A flat slider high in the zone. A stolen base. Just as we say he's been affected, Willie says, forget it. I'm going. I need to get in the scoring position. Looked like an ugly off-speed pitch that was high. And for Willie, that is stolen base number 10. Yeah, great jump right there going on first movement. Navarro gets a pitch up in the zone, up and away. Not able to get a good throw. Almost got him though, right there. But he was on the bag. Nice slide there by Willie to the outside of the bag. So now Kelly Johnson with a 3 2 count. The challenge getting that runner to third. Beaten with a fastball in, but again, extends the at bat. And the big thing right here for Kelly Johnson is to put the ball in play. Make something happen right here. Even though it's a 3 2 count and you're battling up there, continue to make Kershaw throw pitches. If you don't get a good pitch, foul it off. Make them work. Drive that pitch count up. Upton waits on deck as the 3 2 is lifted to left. Pretty well struck. Going back is Rivera to the track. He makes the play. Bloomquist hustles the third. The throw. Not in time. It's cut off. It got the job done. Aggressive base running, too, by Willie Bloomquist. And that ball went to the track. Yeah, that was a nice piece of hit right there by Kelly to stay on that ball. Even better piece of base running right there by Willie Bloomquist. More times than not, you never see a guy tagging up on a ball hit to the same side. But Willie, he gets a smart player right there. He knows Rivera doesn't have a good arm. He's going to challenge him. Makes a nice slide to the outside part of the bag. Matty, of course, letting him know where to slide to. So Kelly with a productive out as he flies to left and now all star Justin Upton. Upton had a couple of at bats in the ball game came up hitless first pitch swinging high fly ball Kemp. He'll charge it he'll give it a go here comes Bloomquist to throw with the tag out at the plate is the call. An outfield assist from Matt Kemp he just threw out Willie Bloomquist at the plate. And was elated upon learning of the result.
book during tonight's game. Receive a coupon for huge savings by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit phxkia.com. And by Bluebell Ice Cream. July is National Ice Cream Month. Celebrate with Bluebell's newest flavor. You know what it's called? Dessert Trio. So the man who ended the inning with his arm tries to get an inning started with his bat. Matt Kemp, the all-star, home run derby participant, leads it off. We saw a couple of angles we'll show you as they're available in our tape room. We saw a couple of angles that Luis Gonzalez said out. Yeah, right here is a play. Nice play by Navarro to reach back and make the tag and, and really tag Willie Bloomquist in the back before he even touches home plate. A nice throw by Kemp. And Matt Williams, third base coach, you got to take that chance right there. More times than not, you're not going to get that many opportunities against Clayton Kershaw to try to score early. Kemp having a fabulous year. Big numbers all around as that one is outside. Here's Navarro getting the, the play, reaching around for the tag. Nice concentration by Navarro, and there you see Bloomquist not even getting to the plate yet. Kemp lifts that one up. And it's a souvenir. You know, although we didn't score a run there, I like the aggressiveness in the first inning. Willie stealing second, tagging up from second, get to third. He's played a full game already. We're only in the second inning. Well, if ever a rest serves somebody well, I think for Willie Bloomquist, uh-oh, that one's belted to center. Young will head under that balcony where he's got room. Oh my, talk about home run derby. He hit a couple like that up toward the roof. That one stayed in though. Kemp who's got 22 long balls is erased. Yeah, and if you're going to give up a long fly ball, that's where you want it hit. If it's hit to left center or right center in the pool area or to left center field, ball almost hitting the structure at the top. <laughs> Matt Kemp has a lot of power and he's really developing this to a strong hitter in the National League. So now former Angel and Blue Jay Juan Rivera, he goes to work. He drives it to left. Goodbye. First at bat is a Dodger. Welcome. Rivera has hammered, and I mean hammered, left-handed pitching this year to a 327 clip. First at bat is a Dodger. He was acquired on Tuesday in exchange for a player to be named later. I think he likes the Dodgers. Boy, he got a nice pitch down in the zone, just hammered it right there. He put the barrel on the ball. Line drive home run to left field. And by the way, he hit that home run against his old teammate from the Angels, Joe Saunders. So maybe at least he had a good feel for things as that one is fouled up to the broadcast level. So the count is 0-1 on James Loney. Right next to the booth here, Ben Scully trying to duck over there. Oh, and two the count. Always a pleasure. Mr. Scully does not make a ton of trips. We have him here. Boyd Robinson, Ben's bodyguard, sitting to Mr. Scully's right. I think he's the one that made the play. But always a pleasure to have the legendary voice of baseball, not just the Dodgers, but of baseball visiting. So James Loney had a really tough second half, carried it into April, where he hit 210. Now, feeling a little bit more confident since April, hitting 295 with an OPS of over 700 at 730. He'll never be, I think everyone has realized, including James, a home run hitter. No, and you know what? I was on that ball club when he was a young rookie coming up, and I, I really didn't think he was going to be a power hitter. He was going to be more of a gap-to-gap -gap type of guy, and... He's really struggled here in the last year and a half to try to get it together. I know he's gotten hot as of late, but guys are really figuring him out. And he, he needs to learn how to make better adjustments a lot quicker to stay at this level. And he said, talking with him before the game, one of his biggest problems, and I'm sure as a player with three or four years' experience, you, you know, and maybe went through this on occasion, as Navarro takes a fastball over the inside. Loney said, I finally got to the point where I just couldn't get out of my own head. I, I just couldn't. I tried something different every time. And it became too much. Bouncing ball in the center field. Base hit for the catcher. 
Deanna Navarro who is hitting just 183 coming in. And Navarro for Deanna that's his first hit this year against a left handed pitcher. Only 12 tries but now one of 13. You know Darren getting back to Loney. Yes. At, at this level you are your own worst enemy up there because this game is built around failure. You fail seven times out of ten you're a 300 hitter but how you react to those seven times that you fail. You have to be able to put that behind you and keep going. There's very few 300 hitters at the end of the season in the major leagues. It's how quick you come back after that AB that plate appearance up there and you go up there and you get the hit when there's runners in scoring position or a key time in the game. That's what separates the average players from the superstar players at this level. And the consistency for the young players for the Dodgers over the last handful of years hasn't been there as Miguel couldn't find that baseball now he does. But Andre Ethier has been a guy that has been as consistent as any. Kent probably second on that line. Although last year was a big step backwards for Matt. And then Loney having more of his struggles over the last, let's say, second half of last year in the first month of this season. We'll see what the future holds. And when you ask a lot of guys in that locker room outside of coaches like Davey Lopes who's been around as a veteran and who can give some guidance when you ask guys who really is there to help beyond a guy like Lopes they say this man in the batter's box Jamie Carroll has been the glue through the off the field issues with the Dodgers he has gotten it done with his work ethic two and two the count Carroll two on the road this year hitting 370. It's not 307. That'd be 370. He has just been steamrolling and, and a guy that kind of getting better at, with age. Yeah, and you need a guy like that. You need that steady journeyman that's been around a little bit, played in a lot of different clubs, and knows how to react to a lot of different obstacles that are thrown at you throughout the season. How about that take? A changeup that a lot of hitters would have gone after. That had to be tempting. Well traveled as we've mentioned he played in his 1000th career game on July the 6th. And again takes a great change up down and spoils the fastball up as the at bat rolls on for Carroll. A three game set with these Dodgers then a, a four game set with the Milwaukee Brewers and the Colorado Rockies wrap up this homestand. We hope to see you a couple of times at the ballpark during this 10 gamer. Line drive Kelly will take it right off the top of the dirt but the big blow in this inning a home run Juan Rivera against his old Angels teammate Joe Saunders.
field again a shining diamond for the world to see during the all star game our Nissan key to the game Luis Gonzalez we bring you in on this one because in the unbalanced schedule long long division and you know the kids that's tough as they head back to school here in about a month it can be a challenge but that simply means the Diamondbacks have a long journey now within their own division. They're below 500, and teams like the Dodgers and Padres are waiting for them. Yeah, they are, and those are the teams that are chasing. So they have nothing to lose. They're going after the Dodgers, or uh, excuse me, the Diamondbacks and the Giants. And the Giants have played well as of late. You know, they've won a lot of games with walk. They lead the league in walk-off hits, and they win those games close and late. And when you can do that, that's a tough battle to get through. So long division, and it will be a journey, certainly. Young out front of an on speed pitch. Into the seats it goes. Arizona comes in within their own division at a 12 and 14 mark. 12 and 14. Played very well in interleague play. They were over 500. The Dodgers, just for the sake of discussion, are 15 and 15. Now let's finish the story. Because the San Francisco Giants this year are 23 and 13 within the National League West. As that one is high. And so. Do the odds become maybe longer for Arizona because of that? Maybe that's why that key ties in. They just have to buck that trend and, and do it in the second half. Yeah, and the Giants have played well at home. And our uh, our schedule favors us playing at home as of late at, to the late part of the season. So we're hoping that we get on that trend and play well at home. And our J.J. comes back strong. And our bullpen picks up where they left off. Change up popped up heading our way will end up down below as a souvenir. The next 20 of the Diamondbacks 29 games are here at home. Arizona finished up a 17 of 20 on the road clip. Heading into the all star break they went five and five on the final 10 game road trip and if you watch closely it could have been better. Goes down and spoils a fastball, hits a line drive to right. Well, the play is made out there by Andre Ethier, so a line out to right. Let's take a look at the Dodgers defensively. Rivera, Kemp, and Ethier in the outfield. Uribe for call, Carroll with Loney at first. Deonor Navarro does the catching. So it's there. I mean, the Diamondbacks will see teams below 500, but a majority of the teams they see below 500 are teams that are foes in the division that give them a handful. 28 games combined against the Padres and Dodgers, 40% of the remaining schedule. And the key is to play well at home. We have all those games at home. We need to play well here. This is why you call it home field advantage, and we should be able to take advantage of it. And you have to give Arizona credit, though. I mean you truly do for going out on the road and staying above 500 knowing these games in the second half was coming to to play to a 26 and 24 clip. Well pretty good. I mean pretty good to stay over 500 and, and two games better. Yeah and like you said a lot of those games that were lost they were right in there. They just couldn't get that one big hit to put them over the top or one big pitch to get them out of an inning. So. Every you know most of the games this year that our club has lost they've put themselves in a situation to win the game. There really hasn't been too many blowout games where they just weren't in it in it. How do these guys rested during the break mentally I think more than anything. The Kirk Gibson style of baseball. Baseball at this big league level is phys or is physically draining no matter who your manager is. It's a hard game physically to play. The Kirk Gibson style of baseball is exhausting mentally as well. And so a lot of these guys I think enjoy just a mental break as Drew is beaten there by Clayton Kershaw with a fastball. So Steven comes up empty. Goes down for the 67th time of the strikeout this year. There you see Kershaw winding up and throwing a high fastball just above the belt. 94 miles an hour just puts it right by Stephen Drew. That's a tough assignment for Drew. He's now one of 15 in his career against Clayton Kershaw. Kirk Gibson not allowed, not about to hide from that. Pitch over the inside corner to Ryan Roberts. Hey, don't forget anytime the Diamondbacks score six or more. 
Taco Bell gives away three free tacos with a large drink purchase between four and six the following day. And that's a good thing is that one is high. One and one the count. Roberts was one of those guys that said I kind of just shut my brain down for a couple of days. You know that my body did rest but. He's a guy that plays so intense and so focused I think. Your heart rate and your brain need to dial it down for a couple of days, correct? Yeah, and he really got a lot more reps than were, were expected out of spring training. He was one of the last guys to make the club, and for him to be one of the key ingredients in this team's first half run is, is amazing. He's played very well for us, and we're counting on him here the second half. If Jeff Blum, who you saw a moment ago, with Bloomquist looking on as well, if Jeff Blum would not have had the knee problems, there would be no Ryan Roberts or at least there wouldn't have been out of spring training which means probably the things he was able to do early on it would have been an uphill climb to to get the attention of that man. High fly lifted to left they're coming out of their seats in the bleachers but it's coming up short one two three you look back to that first and wish you could have at least gotten a tally on that board against Kershaw. Run a derby. Robinson Cano needed to hit 12 in his final round with his father on the mound, his dad Jose, who was at one time a Yankee signee who pitched for the Astros briefly. And Robinson did it. He hit the 12. It was an incredible moment to win the home run derby, setting a record for the final round. What a Monday night it was, what a Tuesday night it was, and Cano, who, by the way, coming into that home run derby, had pulled all 15 of his home runs this year. Nice play by Haney. And he barely got it. Saunders tiptoeing to the bag, barely got the hustling pitcher in Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, I don't think Saunders really realized that Kershaw was busting it right out of the batter's box. He was hustling down the line. Saunders kind of gingerly takes his time getting there. Drops his head and wow. just gets him in, in the nick of time. Are you seeing our Fox Mo camera there? Just nicking him out. I mean, just got it. Oh, that would have been a uh, a red faced moment there, wouldn't it? It really would have. And I'm sure the next time if Kershaw hits one down the line, he'll be there in a hurry. Well, good for Clayton Kershaw. You, you and I have had this discussion. Gracie and I have had this discussion. For some reason, there seems to be some unwritten rule that pitchers can jog 40% on ground outs. Like Kershaw sniffed a hit out there. I mean, Clayton Kershaw is a 275 hitter. He likes his hits. Yeah, he plays hard, and I think he was sniffing a double right there, right when he hit it off the bat. And Nady made a great play down the line. But I think the key, Gonzo, as Huddy we know can handle the bat, I think the key is he didn't dial it back once the play was made. Line drive right field up to Halls and in and 
ends up on his backside. And a nice play there by Justin Upton with a slide to boot. Yeah, that's a great play by Justin Upton. More importantly, it keeps their leadoff hitter, Rafael Furcal, off the bases. There you see him sliding to his right side and making the play on left side. That's a very dangerous play, especially early in the game. If that ball gets by him, it's a possible triple or inside the parker, especially hit to that right side with the center fielder not being able to cover that much ground to get there. Juan Uribe and that one nips the inside corner an aggressive pitch there by Saunders hammering the inside part of the plate Joseph Francis Saunders is 30 years old. He's a Virginia native went to Virginia Tech West Springfield High School Does that change up dips low two and one the count At home and ERA nearly five Chopped out towards third. Roberts snatches that one from up above his knees. One, two, three. Valley Kia retailers by texting the vote you can send to receive a message from Kia Motors of America So what was your favorite all-star moment? You folks at home text to ABC or D to 36929 was it the home run derby moment? We showed you was it Prince Fielder? Even though he was given the business during that home run derby winning the MVP of the ball game the next night Helping the National League with home field advantage the Diamondback intros were wonderful huge ovations for Upton Gibson and Montero well, Wasn't Heath Bell coming into the game as a relief pitcher? Grant Trenbeth our fine head groundskeeper dealing with Heath Bell got, uh, Piece of the dirt Heath charging in yeah So was that your favorite moment and by the way it was neat to see Miguel Montero, the smile that took from ear to ear his face apart when he was introduced in the ball game as well. Yeah, what an exciting time, especially to receive the warm reception from your own hometown crowd. I'm sure it's something that those players will never forget. Folks, we had wrapped up the ball game in St. Louis, we meaning the traveling party. And the telecast was done and Montero then received word after the ball game that he was going to the all-star game It was very emotional. I mean it was something that don't think for one second look these guys make a very good living and they're blessed to play this game and most of them know how blessed they are but he was overwhelmed when he found out. Well it's an opportunity where you've been selected as an all-star that means you are one of the elite you're one of the best players in the game for that particular first half or year or whatever it may be but you've been recognized as one of the best players out there and to get that call it, it truly is an emotional moment for all the players it doesn't matter if you play in one all-star game or if you play in 20 
Miguel flies out to center field. And Miguel was behind the plate catching the final out when Brian Wilson was on the mound as well. Don't forget every time a Diamondbacks player hits a home run this season. Fulton Holmes donates one hundred and fifty dollars to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. It was funny. You and I were talking before the game. You're a home run derby champion as well. And the the warm up and the preparation for you is a little bit different than all the pomp and circumstance that went around some of the great competitors in this year's home run derby. Yeah, I really was. I didn't realize that guys were taking batting practice down there. I was just enjoying the ambiance of the band out there on the field. And Jeff Matuzas, who's the bullpen catcher here for the Diamondbacks, was the guy who actually threw to me. And uh, we were just enjoying everything, looking around. And they said, we're getting ready to start in five minutes. And I said, well, okay, well, I need to hit. And they go, they've been hitting. So we went <laughs> out there, cold turkey. And the rest, as they say, is history. It worked out pretty good for us. Xavier Nady goes down on strikes. Now, I'm told you put on quite a display. The team hadn't made their way back, but I'm told you put on quite a display on Sunday. I mean, are you kidding me? I'm told you took over the entire celebrity game. Well, that's Raleigh Fingers right there, Hall of Famer. And then, of course, I had to steal wow. a hit from him, and I was able to hit one off. Freddie Lynn right there, the legend, trying to take one away from me. What a, it was a lot of fun there. I had my son Jacob standing at home plate with me. Good for you. It was it was a lot of fun, and the reception from the crowd here was amazing. Did, did, did the heart beat a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did it? I had to, yep, they were flowing. Oh, it was good out nice. there. It was good to be out there again. Joe Saunders fouls that one off. 0-2 the count. Now, what in the world happened, by the way, to my, um, my, my other color analyst in that game? He didn't perform quite as well, did he? No, he had a good time, though. He... Well, I, that wasn't my question. <laughs> The 0 2 to Joe Saunders. Still being the ambassador, I see. He was doing the meet and greet over at okay. first base with the visiting team. Meaning the ladies? <laughs> Everybody. Okay. Through. One and two the count. But he was dropping balls at first base. Swing and a miss. Saunders goes down on strikes. Hello, ma'am. My name's Mark Grace. It's nice to meet you. Ballpark lottery. It's Kachinko. A lot of fun. Gila River Casinos brings it to you. Find out more, and everyone's a winner every time by visiting Section 111 during the regular season home games. Feeling like winning a lottery is being a top round draft pick as well. And as this goal game goes on, and one to nothing is our score, we congratulate the Diamondbacks organization, their top pick in the draft. He must feel like he continues to win the lottery. He's earned it, though. Trevor Bauer out of UCLA. The Golden Spikes Award winner. And if you're new to the award, let me put it simple. It's college baseball's Heisman Trophy. That's exactly what it is and what a season he had. And hopefully soon, hopefully within the next days or weeks, he will be 
in the fold for the Arizona Diamondbacks. I know Kevin Towers is hard at work with that negotiation. Probably not an easy one, though. Yeah, it really is. And we're excited for Trevor uh, to receive another accolade like that. And it's such an exciting time for a young man like that. And I'm sure he's anxious and eager to get his career started once that contract gets signed, sealed, and delivered. And we're very anxious, the fans here in Arizona, to have him wearing a D-backs uniform. He could get to the, uh, the highest level somewhat quickly. Is that what they say? Well, with the skills that he's shown, I think uh, his call to the major leagues, if he continues to... Uh, to show his abilities out there is not going to take him too long to get here. Well, it's exciting. So hopefully the business side of things, which I don't much like to talk about during a baseball game. That's Kevin's job. Hopefully the business side of things will get done so we can talk more about his baseball exploits. Two and one the count on Andre Ethier. A little number on a fastball in on the hands. Steven got it out of his glove just in time. Not an easy play. And Andre Ethier, so let's think back. He was beaten by something soft away in the first inning. This time, Joe really being aggressive, going in with a fastball, tying him up. Yeah, really, he's got Andre Ethier thinking up there at the plate, and that's what you want to do. You want to work in and out to those left-handers, especially when you're a left-handed pitcher. You get them thinking at the plate, trying to look for one pitch and deceive them with another. So we're talking power numbers batting average numbers and speed numbers that's who Matt Kemp is a guy who leads the team in just about everything for the Dodgers it's a pretty elite group too I mean a guy that can lead your team in batting average and home runs and stolen bases as that one has popped up to the right side Upton's got a ways to go he finds his spot and he puts it away but Kemp with 27 bags and 67 RBIs 22 homers, a 313 batting average does just that. Yeah, Matt Kemp has really turned his season around. He's really becoming a bona fide star for this Los Angeles team. He is the marquee player on the club right now. It wasn't always that way. I think there was a growing process that had to occur. Heck, you were teammates of his, a teammate of his when as Juan Rivera takes in when you probably saw him go through some growing pains. Yeah, he was a young player coming up, and of course, being in L.A., you have a lot of lights, stars, and action around, and got caught up in that a little bit, but now he's really turned his career around and become a very good player. 2-0 the count to Juan Rivera with Kemp looking on. There is a peace about him. And we say that about Upton now that you're seeing this year. There is a comfort in his own skin and that uniform. Pulls that one on the ground, boy. He's really having a night against his old teammate, longtime Angels teammates, and Juan Rivera. You saw what he did there. He homered back in the second inning. Here you see the pitch down and away. Really a nice piece of hitting to hook that ball in the hole. A changeup. Saunders trying to get him to roll over on that pitch, but he just got enough of it to hit it between third and short. James Loney takes outside. Loney in 08 and 09 had an on base of 348 and he slugged 417. A ton of extra base hits. He's on base in the last two seasons, has dropped 20 points to slug 40 points. And the extra base hits have Dissipated as well. Because that one is outside of James. James and Chris Young were foes quite a bit on the prep scene, high school baseball in Houston, Texas. And Lodi could pitch. And Young had to deal with that. What good take. I mean, a good idea with the pitch, but he didn't offer. So the count is 3 0. Oh. Both very talented Houston ball players. Of course, Young talks about what could have been homers, and Loney says he didn't get many against me. Young will remind Loney that the wind was really gusting in a couple of balls I hit hard against you. They should have been homers. <laughs> of course, that's what the hitters are always going to say. <laughs> Three and one the count. The saving grace for Loney, like Young, is that 
even though he has not been the offensive player, he's a very good first baseman. We know he can play center field. Just off the plate, didn't get the call, so ball four. Well, Darren, you know it's not too late here to get tickets for the remaining D-backs versus Dodgers game this weekend. Log on to dbacks.com slash beat LA and save up to 40% on lower level baseline reserve tickets and get $10 in free D-Bucks. Offer is valid for a limited time only, so log on now to dbacks.com slash beat LA. And keep coming out this weekend. Looks like a pretty good walk up for you folks today, and we want to see you coming out in good numbers. We you had a great experience somewhere around the ballpark. We hope you did. Is that one is line base hit left field? Well, he's going to get on it. The throw will head to Roberts, who cuts it off. So a two out RBI, Deonna Navarro, who's two for two in this ball game. And the key, obviously, the solid at bat by Loney, who now stands at second with a walk. The walk is the most costly part of this inning. Yeah, it really is, Darren. I think you have to go after James Loney there with a 3-1 lefty-lefty situation. Of course, there he, he threw not a bad pitch right there to, to Navarro, but he just got enough of it to hit it in the hole, just as Rivera did. And there you see the throw to the plate, no play there. Rivera getting a nice jog, running around from second to third to score on the play. So two to nothing, the Dodgers lead it over the Diamondbacks. That's the very same score, two to nothing, that the Giants have posted on the San Diego Padres in the top of the second inning. Two to nothing in San Diego, California. San Francisco leading San Diego. Navarro, three of his last six with runners in scoring position. Breaking ball comes back to an off speed pitch. By the way, in that Giants Padres game, it's Tim Lincecum against Dustin Mosley. Lincecum against Mosley. We'll keep an eye throughout the night on that one because it matters a lot. Beat him with a fastball in. Kelly scoots to his right with a flip. The inning comes to an end, but a single, oh, and a painful walk, and then another single. That man's walk was key. Follow every D-backs game through Game Connect on FoxSportsArizona.com. It's a second screen experience while you watch the game on television. You can follow stat trend for players, interact with Twitter, keep up with the game action in real time. Luis Gonzalez giving it a look over there. Game Connect online at FoxSportsArizona.com. Very good stuff. Game Connect. 
kind of the interactive way to enjoy a baseball game. I think we all know now and been guilty of this with college basketball and different sports that we have evolved some of us not all of us and only on certain occasions to where you might watch the game and you have uh, an iPad or your laptop out while you watch the game. I like this social buzz your bios pitches up and in want to know the count. You like it over there do you I do. So we're kind of learning as we go with this. I had a chance to check it out last night while I was watching another game. As that one is over the inside corner to Willie Bloomquist. Checking it out when the uh, the Brewers were playing the Rockies and Fox Sports Wisconsin had the same game connect. Two to nothing the score the Dodgers on top of the Diamondbacks. And the fastball high and away two and two the count will you if you're just joining us. You need to look at the first inning Willie Bloomquist started to set the table tried to he singled had a stolen base moved to third on a fly out. Justin Upton hit a fly ball to shallow center where that man threw out Willie Bloomquist by an eyelash at the plate. And that may end up as Willie's on the move again. But look how much they were playing him the other way that Ethier took two steps and was on that ball. Well, having a good night. Let's see if he gets it going again. Yeah, really, the interesting part was Ethier was playing him the other way, but Loney was way off the first baseline. And there you see, that's a routine ground ball to the first baseman if he's playing there. Loney was playing him more towards second base. I've got to ask you why. I mean, if you're going to see one guy so far the other way. Well, sometimes in scouting reports, like when I used to hit, they would play the infield to pull and the outfield to play straight away or the other way. Okay. Because when you look at the scouting reports, a lot of times most players hit the ball on the ground a certain way and other guys hit fly balls to either left center, right center. So sometimes you see a shift in the defense totally opposite in the infield and the outfield. Want to know the count you see here just about straight up for Kelly Johnson. Or well, you could bet Kershaw is going to keep an eye on Bloomquist after stealing a base on him here in the first inning. Yeah we mentioned he's got 22 career pickoffs he picked off 10 last year. That man behind the plate really prides himself in cleaning up the base pads. Deonor Navarro in his limited playing time. He's got more catcher pickoffs than anybody. He leads the majors with four catcher pickoffs and just 32 games behind the plate. So if you stole a base against the Dodgers and this young pitcher, you've done something. One and two the count. Justin Upton waits on deck. Big power numbers for Kelly Johnson, especially as a second baseman. Johnson 16 homers at the break, the most by any Diamondback second baseman going into the Midsummer Classic, and that means ever. Breaking ball just hung around. We've talked more this year, I think, than any year that I've worked here about spoiling two strike pitches. And how it keeps you alive. He just did that. Didn't yeah, he did. That was what we call an emergency hack, just kind of. Giving it a late swing right there just to try to get a piece of it and, and stay in the batter's box with two strikes. The big Texan still just 23 years old Clayton Kershaw. This is another man from his home state in Johnson. Oh boy. He did it again. That's four this year. That's 23 in his career. His pickoff total now matches his age. Well, we talked about a little while ago knowing that Willie Bloomquist took off earlier on him in the first inning. Kershaw was going to keep an eye on him and there he did he picked him off. Well there's no better pick me up for a pitcher. Over through that breaking ball it stayed high two and two the count. He's thinking now if I can go from pesky base runner on with nobody out. To two quick outs, if he can get Kelly, that's exactly what he's thinking. 
Overthrew two breaking balls in a row. Yeah, he really hasn't been able to find command on that breaking ball. The 3 2 pitch. Out front, off speed. Johnson goes down. Justin Upton, beloved during the All Star break. They chanted his name during the home run derby when he was omitted. Justin Upton certainly felt that love from the community. Our fans really, uh, really showed me something tonight, man. That was, that was, you know, that was a lot. Of, there was a lot of energy here. They were, they were behind me, man. Behind me and Miggy. Um, it was, it was just, a, it was, it was a great experience. And uh, you know, anytime it's here in your hometown, you know, uh, and you get that type of love, you, you really, you find a, uh, a new respect for your, for your, uh, for your fans. I think the key word is new respect. At times, even though Justin and his abilities. Were loved from the time he was a teenager helping this club get into the postseason with some big hits. I think anytime you lose, as has gone on for the past two and a half years, minus this season, things can get chilly on occasion between fan and player. And I think that was the case. And yeah, you know, there's been a lot of weight thrown on his shoulder. A young player coming in here asked to be the leader of this club. Well, that's a shame there. We'll finish that thought because it's an interesting subject matter. The man sitting to my right has played with huge expectations throughout his career. He has too, but this city really embraced him during the All-Star festivities. There is all-star Justin Upton. We will continue the subject matter around the ball game as that one is over the outside corner. Kershaw grounded out and he grounded out to Xavier Nady. That was back in the third inning and nearly beat Joe Saunders to the back. As that one paints the outside corner again. 0 and 2 the count. You know most pitchers when they come to the plate it's kind of a freebie out but when he comes Kershaw comes to the plate. He's swinging the bat. That time he goes down on strikes. You were talking about Justin Upton and how he and Miguel Montero received a really rousing welcome during the All Star game. You know, I think right there at that moment he's realizing they really care about me. Miguel as well. We kind of had the spotlight on that man as our conversation. Continue your thoughts about the expectations with both All Stars playing in this game. Well, there is ever since he's been drafted. I mean, he came up, signed his contract. They brought him right out to the big club to take batting practice with all the guys. I was here. I was one of those guys marveling in amazement how far he was hitting balls as a young 19 year old kid out here. So the expectations from day one were very high on him. Of course, he went out there. He's had some good years in the minors, came up, struggled a little bit when he first got here. And then, of course, he's had his issues at times 
not hustling, got pulled out of a couple games. But I think now, realizing that you're an all-star for the second time, going out there and playing and receiving the welcome from your home, home crowd in the all-star game made him realize that how special this place is, how special the fans are, and now I think he really wants to go out there and play hard every single day. Not that he wasn't before, but now he realizes, hey, you know what, these people really care about me not only as the player but as the person. And that certainly has been there, the uptown the entire time. But there also is Main Street in Disneyland where you see something out front and then there's nothing behind. And maybe early on, uptown was nothing more than a marketing concept. Now maybe it means more yeah, with it, a moment like it that. It does. And what Justin has to realize is when you, you're a high-profile guy here, when you struggle... The fans have that right to yell at you and scream. Heck, he said that in his quote after the game. I expect to hear it when I struggle. And when you play well, they're going to clap for you. Yeah, it was a wonderful week for that man. And he's earned it now. He's earned it. Prince Fielder earning All-Star Game Most Valuable Player. Consider this. Who are the four first basemen to win All-Star Game MVP awards? All-Star Game MVP awards. The four first basemen. One of them I know won the award twice. That comes to mind anyway. Front of mind. Not tip of the tongue. Just front of the mind. I'll let you folks at home guess. Here's Chris Young. Now you're welcome to play along, Gonzo. I'm waiting for my text to fire up here. That's a foul ball. In on the hands, one and one the count. A little bit more on Chris Young and his continued development. We bring Jody in. How are you, Jody? I'm doing great, Darren. You know, I had a chance to talk to Chris Young. Speaking of development, he's the one player. He's played in all 92 games. This is 93rd, Justin Upton playing in 92. But you know what? He's dealing with a sore left thumb right now and he said the break the four games really hasn't helped it it's going to be a nagging injury he's getting great help from the training staff here but Kirk Gibson had an interesting perspective he said he expects to play with pain Chris Young does he's been down to the minors he's been through it all his game is entirely different now he knows what he needs to do and he understands that even at 80 percent not to say that he's at 80 percent but it was an example that he can and will still help this team but he is dealing with that sore thumb guys and he actually said awkward swing hurts it more right Re regular swing good swing it doesn't have any pain in that thumb he just had the awkward swing that we'll see again Jody don't go too far because 
Gibson made it clear, didn't he, that he now watches him to maybe give him an occasional day off. He thinks there are times when he tries too hard to play through that, correct? Well, he said he's the, he's the guy, and not the one guy, but definitely a guy that he worries about. He doesn't always believe him because he knows he's going to say he's fine. And he does a great job of taking care of himself, not only in the offseason, but during the season. So, yeah, I mean, certainly it'll be monitored. But Chris told me, he said he does not expect the thumb issue to affect his game, Darren. Thank you, Jody Jackson. Good stuff. Hands and wrists. I'm telling you, it's a funky swing there as we worry about the hands and wrists. There it comes out of the hand of Stephen Drew. That's the golden part for the hitter, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Your hands and your eyes, believe it or not. And I think with Chris Young, with his, with his hands being a big part of his thing, I think he's going to have to try to develop some type of a thumb pad or a thumb guard or something just to make an adjustment. You know the pain is going to be there, so now you just need to try to get some type of cushioning or something and start using it in batting practice till you get comfortable with it, and you know you're going to have to deal with it until the end of the season. Just an electric arm. You talk about who throws hard in Major League Baseball from the left side. The hardest throwing left-handed starting pitchers are David Price, CC Sabathia, and then third on that list is this pitcher. From the left side, the best fastballs, Price almost 95. CC and, and Kershaw both average about 93, just ahead of John Lester. Well, I think Kershaw right now, he's starting to get in a groove. What our D-backs players need to start doing is stepping out and just breaking up his rhythm. Pitches up and in. I mean, he's grabbing that ball and getting right back on the rubber, ready to go. He wants to get his offense back in there. And why not throw a fastball if you throw that hard? Steven let it travel, but just couldn't do as much as he wanted to with it. Two outs in the inning. Drew is hitless in his two tries here in the second half. Well, don't forget to visit APS.com to take the online energy analyzer and see how much energy and money you can save. Actually, did it in our home, and our home's about 30 years old. It made a lot of difference. Visit APS.com, the energy assist of the game. Well, there you see a fastball to Roberts, 93 miles an hour over the outer half, just for way for a ball. Roberts fights it off somehow. There's the spark plug out there. Mentally refreshed as he said spent a lot more time with his family But the little one in his home as well Ryan Roberts with a base hit and maybe it gets something going Got a fastball up in the zone nice swing Roberts didn't look like he didn't know where the ball when he looks up I guess Clayton Kershaw will do that to you, huh? So Miguel Montero won a four now career against Clayton Kershaw. Swing and a miss at a kind of a chest high slider. Slider Miggy had just an awful swing right there. Let's see him looking back at the umpire. Kind of wondering what was that. Oh and one the count. Yeah, Kershaw can be effectively wild. He can get out of that zone. Not that time. So he goes ugly slider, then paints at 94. You know, and these are the the, the at bats right here where like Miggy needs to spread out a little bit and just try to shoot the ball to left center field, not try to do too much, stay on it. When Miggy is hitting his best, he hits the ball the other way instead of trying to get pull happy up at the plate. Hold that ball to the right side and Easy chance for the veteran second baseman Jamie Carroll. Roberts with a single. He is stranded. We roll on through five. All Clayton and the Dodgers.
Team trivia question: The four first basemen to win All-Star Game MVP awards. Uh, I knew Steve Garvey won it twice. There you have it: Willie McCovey and Fred McGriff. By the way, Fred McGriff should be in the Hall of Fame. Just to veer off on the subject matter for a moment. And there's Prince Fielder for the decisive home run the other way. He. Mr. Fielder and his Milwaukee Brewers will be in town for four games Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And join us on the telecast at some point. I'm going to sit down with Prince Fielder and Justin Upton together and have a conversation, talk hitting. Well, I will be tuning in for that. I'd love to hear that conversation. It should be a lot of fun. We'll just leave it at that. And by the way, in Tuesday's ball game, Barry Enright will be the starting pitcher. If you missed that early on, as that is rolled out to Lady, he booted it. Saunders tries to recover an error off the heel of the glove, so Nady came charging in that one. Almost got lucky in a sense that he kicked it over to Saunders, but you're not prepared to make that reaction. And so a tough break there for Joe as Nady unable to make the play. They really hear Andre Ethier rolls over on a ground ground ball right there and Nady just tries to scoop it in his glove just pops out. Saunders getting over. Trying to make the dive. I mean we've seen Joe get dirty and dive a lot. He just wasn't prepared for that one. Funny you can play all the plays you want in pitchers fielding practice PFP they call it. But you don't prepare for errors that are kicked your way. And that's what hurts. On in front of that man with an error, and he homers. on the inner half right there and Matt Kemp does not miss it. Another ball driven into right center field there to make the play is young so Kemp With yet another long one, he's got 23 homers. By the way, he and his mates have 50 together. 27 for his mates, 23. As he and Tony Gwynn Jr. get together. And really, Matt Kemp has been here the last, what, he's been here almost a week, so he's been taking batting practice out here on this field. So this is almost home field for him here. No, you're exactly right. I couldn't find a single all-star. I mean a single one. I asked them all. Had a chance to be down and do a lot of the interviews on the field for those of you in house on the scoreboard. Do you like hitting here? Do you like the batter's eye? Do you like the lights? I couldn't find anyone to say anything just kind of negative about hitting in Chase Field. Every hitter loves hitting. Every hitter. I talked to Josh Hamilton also coming in and he was talking about how nice this ballpark looked and how nice it plays. And Matt Kemp comfortable. You saw when he crossed home plate. That is not a, a show up at all to the opponent with a point into the air at a very young age in eighth grade. He, he lost his younger brother, much younger, at two years old, Tyler. He passed away. So Kemp always pays tribute to his young, young brother who he lost when he was in eighth grade. A traumatic moment, if you can imagine. That's who he is always remembering. And he plays with his spirit inside of him. And I'm sure Mr. Kemp that Tyler would be very proud of what you're accomplishing this year. And it's kind of that perspective he's gotten back to now. That kind of grounded Oklahoma upbringing that he's gotten back to that's brought him back down to where he needs to be. And it's been part of a good season for him. I mean, that's silly power, though, Gonzo. That's silly what he just did to that baseball. Yeah, he's a tremendous athlete. Great size and ability out there. He's got all the tools in the game. Just had to put it together mentally, and he's starting to do that this year. Waves 
Hawks over the top of that one. One and two, the count. So four to nothing is the score with Clayton Kershaw working. So you're kind of hiking camelback, if you can picture it. You're climbing, trying to get to the top, which is your deficit. Into the dirt it goes. Miguel, a nice play. You just kind of have to picture that mountain getting a little steeper and the angle getting a little tougher. We'll see what Arizona has left in the fight. A big blow there by Kemp. I mean, he has been on his game. As a matter of fact, in his nine wins this year, his ERA is .65. .65 in his nine wins. Why has he been so good tonight? He's our APS Energy All-Star. Well, he has pitched as advertised. I mean, he's a young phenom in the game. He was struggling with his curveball early, and he's finally got it dialed in, and he has been overpowering, throwing all his pitches for strikes and keeping our D-back hitters off balance. And there you see the domination against Arizona. Time to get it going. Jeff Blum has bat in hand as he waits on deck, and he will make his Arizona Diamondbacks debut. Switch hitter Blum, but first it's another veteran in front of him, Xavier Nady. Takes that one out of the catcher's mid up into the second tier of seats. 0 and 1 the count. And Kershaw in his nine wins has pitched 69 in the third innings, given up 42 hits. And struck out 80 in 69 and a third. Popped up. Couldn't do anything with that one. And here is Loney. And now Jeff Blum, it's been a long road back. He is added to the roster. This is a guy that since 2006 is a 299 pinch hitter. Has hit big home runs in the postseason. Was brought on to help the Diamondbacks out, maybe play some third. And away we go. The Arizona Jeff Lum receives his opportunity with one out. Awkward swing at a fastball inside. Jody Jackson caught up with him today. What'd you learn, Jody? Well, I had the chance to talk to Jeff when he's been up here. He's been at Salt River Fields really for most of the time since spring training, but he did go down and play at Reno. He said, It's Christmas in July for me. It's just like opening day. This is going to pop this one to the second baseman. And he, he said, though, it's, it's really exciting. You know, coming off the break, he said, I'm ready to go. You know, guys know, yeah, 92 games have been played. There's 70 to go. But for me, I am extremely energized. I'm ready to go here. It, it truly is like an opening day for him. Well, and there's something to that, Gonzo, I think. I think he is a guy that can maybe put a little fresh energy in that room when guys get tired. Yeah, he can. I mean, he's missed for the most part just about the whole first half of the season. So, he is going to be that guy that a lot of players are going to lean on to try to help carry him once he feels comfortable out there. This is opening day for him, really, going out there and playing. And he's got a tough draw going after Kershaw, his first, first at bat here to start the second half. 1-0 the count to Willie Bloomquist. 
You guys talked about both being father of triplets. <laughs> we did when he was uh, when his wife was pregnant with him. So we talked a little bit about him. I told him to get his sleep when he goes on the road because when he comes <laughs> home, it's going to be a lot a very difficult time. Two and oh the count to Willie. Now these are games that Arizona has been a part of. The tough thing is that it is Kershaw working. But in these games in the first half they never seemed to disappear. First time through pretty good second time through they get a little bit better third time through. And that's where we are now Arizona working the third time through. They become a pretty good team. Again Clayton Kershaw's pitch. Century Link high speed internet high speed pitch. Just saunders at 91 miles an hour. Clayton Kershaw though a much more timid just six miles an hour tonight. Obviously that's 96 miles an hour. Well, no wonder he's hard to hit it. It barely makes it to the plate. Darn graphics. Clayton Kershaw when getting four runs of support or more. Has never lost a game in his career. He's 26 and 0. You know I was sitting here thinking. All the years that I've played. And I'm sure Gracie could almost tell you the same thing. The Diamondbacks had an extra day layoff four days. Instead of the typical three a lot of teams played yesterday because of having the all-star game when you take a day off That's just a mental day off when you take two days off It throws you a little bit out of whack now you get that extra day now They've been off four days if you sit home and don't pick up a bat or do anything Although they did have a workout yesterday Going out there and facing live pitching is totally different. Right, there's no live pitching in that workout. There is no. They're just out there taking batting practice, trying to get the blood flowing again. But when you sit around for four days, I don't care how long you've been playing in the major leagues, it's pretty tough to get back out there and grind it out. That's why you see guys that have been on the disabled list. When they come out, they're a little bit rusty when they get out there because they got to face live pitching again. And that's really live pitching. This guy, yeah, I mean, he's more than live. Yeah, this guy's no cakewalk right here. He's one of the most elite, dominant pitchers, left-handed pitchers in the game today. One and two, the count. Into the dirt it goes. And it's blocked up there. They talk about Kershaw being noticed as a real elite star pitcher. His ERA the last three seasons of 291 is only bettered by Halliday, Wainwright, and Josh Johnson. The lowest opponent's batting average against in baseball since 2009 at 210. Lowest slugging percentage against at 305. And only Tim Lincecum. Who's got two Cy Young awards has more strikeouts per nine since 09 than this man. Bouncing ball ranging as Carroll sets fires and the beat goes on for the young man out of Dallas Texas.
early. In the first inning, Willie Bloomquist made his way to third. Justin Upton for the second out of the inning. Bloomquist tagging Kemp on the mark. Great tag by Deanna Navarro. And out at the plate, that kind of set the tone for the night with Kershaw working. That's really so far all he has needed. Dodgers have got no production out of left field. They might have just found some in Juan Rivera. And then in front of an error, I mean a crush ball to left field. That baseball's now flat. 23 home runs this year. And Clayton Kershaw has taken advantage of that offensive support. He's been dynamic tonight. Matt Kemp, the all-star, who struggled hitting homers in the home run derby, said when they really count, I've got no problem hitting them. As Jamie Carroll leads things off. That's the story if you're just joining us. Luis Gonzalez sits to my right. I'm Darren Sutton. Jody Jackson on the scene down below by the Diamondbacks dugout. And thank you for inviting us into your home tonight. We trust your week. It was a good one. Enjoy your weekend. Veteran right-hander Aaron Heilman receives the assignment now. And that's rolled out to third where Ryan Roberts the throw off the mark with the tag in time for the out. Laz Diaz with a point in the call there at first base for Aaron Heilman. It's been a tough first half of the season. He hopes for the second half that there will be a step in another direction. First batters have had their way, so that was good to see him get that first batter there. Sinker, slider, and a really good changeup. I mean, he can get swings and misses on his fastball because of that changeup, correct? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And hopefully this couple days off that he had, it really got him to clear his mind and come back prepared for this second half of the season. Because if you need bullpen help, and he could be one of those guys that could fill that role for you. the outside corner Arizona at this point at the break last year was 34 and 55 very different this year they went into the break at 49 and 43 there's that athlete Clayton Kershaw almost had a hit on a hustle single in the third was erased this time it's a laser beam he's got 12 hits this year and that's a bonus when you got a hitter like that sitting ninth he's the pitcher and he can get on base we just hope we can get him tired while he's out there on the base pass because he's been very dominant tonight on the mound. The Dodgers went into the break last year 10 games over 500 this year they went into the break 10 below. Lifted left field. Bloomquist that's an easy chance there's that fastball that beat him. Well, Darren, you can follow the D-backs with MLB.com at bat 11 from your iPhone, iPad, Android, or BlackBerry. Get live audio, pitch-by-pitch -pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit dbacks.com for details. Heilman in his first 18 games had an ERA of almost 9. It was 8.84. In his last 13 appearances, it's about three and a half. So the work has been much better for Aaron Heilman. Juan Uribe now. And the Diamondback bullpen, even though at 398, they'll tell you we even could be better than that. Remember at this point last year, the Arizona bullpen, not at 398. They were at 6.6. .6. That was the ERA. Seemed like it was a lot higher than that at times. It did at times. Well, it went over. It went over eight in the month of May last year. Yeah, Charles Nagy's done a nice job, and it's tough to me being a pitching coach with regard to the bullpen because you can't throw bullpens because you might have to pitch that night. And, uh, I, and I think a lot of the attention has been thrown on this bullpen for the simple fact of what we've had to witness here the last two years. Kevin Towers continues to look into and hopes to address that bullpen continues to look for upgrades. For now Zach Duke by the way will pitch out of that bullpen for the Diamondbacks. 
with Barry Enright starting on Tuesday. Oh my, broke his bat. No play is made. Two outs in the inning. And a break there for Uribe, who had that one just snapped in his hands. Well, there you see the ball just barreling in on him. Base hit for Uribe. See a smile on his face. Actually, the barrel traveled further than the ball. About three times this far. And fortunately, everyone is all right. A chance to speak with the commissioner during the All Star Week, and he said that the Maple Bat issue is improved, but it's not to where it should be, and it's constantly being researched. They did a lot of research with the University of Wisconsin in the Forestry Division to look to improve even more so the safety. He said, We're not there yet. And it was evident there a moment ago. So hopefully they'll continue to improve the safety for the players and the fans, but they're working on it. We don't see the snap and the break that we saw a season ago, but it needs to get better. 2 and 0 the count. Up and away, 3 and 0 the count to Andre Ethier. Well, oh, this is definitely a guy you want to go after because the guy on deck has been doing all the damage on defense and offense, which is Matt Kemp. Kirk Gibson used three words when talking about relief pitching in the second half. And if I have a chance, I'll mention it over the outside corner. He said, We have relied heavily on our relief pitching in the first half. It's still got to get better. He said, We've got to use the bullpen properly. And he said, The one thing our bullpen has to do, whether we're up three or down four, is lock people down. Those three words he used when talking about his bullpen. He made it simple. The expectations were when you come out of that gate, you just lock people down. You can't come back when it's seven to nothing, but you can at four nothing. Joe Patterson. Joe took a Grand Canyon vacation, by the way, during the All Star break. <laughs> that, I just thought I'd throw that out there. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> well, here you have a three-two count. Runners are going to be on the move here. Big pitch here for Heilman. If you're Andre Ethier, you're sitting dead red. Back to the screen it goes. Four to nothing is the score. I mean, there's no secret. You've got to come at him with a fastball because you have no place to put him. You do not want to face Matt Kemp with the bases loaded. a walk it's ball four he will face Matt Kemp with the bases loaded in ethier walk rates are up a bit this year but so are strikeouts a big time to come up with a walk his first walk of the ball game bases loaded for Matt Kemp and if you blinked you missed this one getting out Got a different situation. The pitcher Kershaw, Uribe with the shattered bat, almost a swinging bunt single, and then a walk. And really threw an off speed pitch to Andre Ethier with a 3 2 count, trying to trick him, and Andre wasn't biting. Outside corner, strike one. And Matt Kemp looking for something middle in. First pitch there didn't get it, so he he took the pitch. Breaking ball is outside. One ball and one strike. The count with Rivera waiting on deck. Finally, the Dodgers out of that left field spot have a little bit of protection. Rivera's homered already in this game. 
because left field this year has been a sinkhole for the Dodgers. That's just the third home run a moment ago. Rivera hit a left fielder has hit all season for LA. Bouncing ball in the left field. It's a base hit. One run is in. Uribe hustles on down. He will score. So Kemp having a big night. Seven for ten against Aaron Heilman now in his career. He's got four RBIs tonight. The All Star has enjoyed his week or so here in Arizona. There you see Matt Kemp getting another pitch down and in. Nice try by Ryan Roberts just out of his reach. And there's a comfort level certainly. And those three words that Kirk Gibson threw out there today. Tonight Heilman unable to lock people down. Well, I think Howman got in trouble when he had to pick his poison with Andre Ether with a 3 2 count or go after Matt Kemp and he tried to throw a, an off speed pitch on 3 2 instead of going right after him with a fastball and say, Here it is. You either beat me because I'm not going to let the guy behind me beat us again. So here, Matt Kemp now has four RBIs in this game. And that happened earlier tonight. You know, careful pitches and. Loney earning that walk on a breaking ball and after the Loney walk in the fourth inning an RBI by Navarro. A little bit of nibbling going on that of course was Saunders pitching. Now this will be the test for Rivera. Because Juan Rivera has not hit right handed pitching at all. Tony Gwynn's already down there and Gwynn was according to Don Mattingly when he was speaking at the workout yesterday Tony Junior is going to be his left fielder against right handed pitching. But if Rivera can find his stroke against righties, he'll provide pop. And that's something LA hasn't had on the left side of the outfield. That time the slider up. The Dodgers had a little bit of momentum coming into the break. One of the first times this year they had found some. They went into the break with a four game winning streak, and the train didn't go off the tracks. A lot of times you hate for that break to come. A little number fooled Bally with a changeup, but not before Kemp continues an all star caliber night here at Chase Field. Slide presented by CenturyLink. Todd Walsh with Joe Borowski. Joe, you were intrigued by the starting pitching matchup. You said as much in the pregame show. It's focusing on Clayton Kershaw. What impressed you most about his outing? What's not to like? Yeah. He's not just a young thrower anymore. He's matured into a elite pitcher. I'll break down his outing and tell you exactly how he was able to silence these dying back bats. All right, we'll do that. Plenty of baseball left, though, guys. We'll send it back to you, Darren and Luis. Take it away. Well said. Good stuff. Looking forward to getting your insights and looking forward to talking baseball again with you guys. Glad to have all of us back together. Tonight a tough one. 
Great atmosphere in the ballpark tonight. You can feel a nice walk up for the Diamondbacks, but the Dodgers have stolen the show. And they have done so because of this youngster on the mound. And Arizona, the one guy who you shouldn't and can't let beat you, has beaten them. Yeah, you're exactly right, Darren. It's been a two man wrecking crew with Kershaw and Matt Kemp out there. I mean, Matt Kemp has provided the the strong throw in the first inning. He's provided the offense and Kershaw has provided the pitching. Change up dips out in front of it to Zupton. Tony Gwynn out there in left field now. Justin. Is lined out to center. I'll tell you, tough break in his last at bat because these two young, talented all stars lined up and. Austin Upton hit a screamer to center. But it hung up just long enough for that man to come get it. Tough break. A foot here, a foot there, and it's a, an extra base hit for Justin. Boy, he pitched him so carefully off speed out front. Put a great sequence on him. Let's take a look at the Home Depot doing more on defense. And when you take a look at the defense tonight, there's been plenty of defense out there in center field. First, there's a throw, an RBI taken away from Upton. That would have been an RBI, and then a base hit taken away from Upton on a screaming line drive. So, thanks a lot, Matt Kemp. Well, that's how you treat a former teammate on the All Star team, right there. <laughs> Uribe unable to make the play. He let that ball play him. He kind of. Went side saddle on the ball, and once that happened, it ate him up. Yeah, and a credit to Chris Young just hustling down the line. Could have very easily just jogged down there on that nice one hopper there to Uribe. Just lifted his glove just a hair to get under. He could have, but he better not have. Talking about that jogging thing. He was running hard down the line, so he reaches. Now here's Stephen Drew. Struck out and fly to left field. So when you went to these all star games Gonzo did you. Did you do a lot of listening did you come away with some knowledge from from other elite players. I, you know what for me it was more of uh, just looking around and just. You don't really. You don't talk to players too much about preparation you just watch them and see how they go about their business you know you had to get ready for a game in, in a different way. You know I played in five I started in one so the other four I got to observe until later on in the game and that's what I like to do I like to see how the other good players in the game prepare themselves and it's amazing to see how different so many of these players are in in in, in their ways of getting ready for the game. Kershaw called with the ball. Looked like as he was looking to take his sign. He didn't step off the knee buckled as he was coming set. We'll see what we can see but that's what I saw from the naked eye. Yeah it started like to come set. Yeah, he flinched a little bit. If you just step off with that left foot you're fine. That's all you have to do just step off but. He wasn't able to do that so let's see if Arizona can. At least put up a fight here in the end and get something going against him. There's only one Diamondback that has gotten past second base past it. It was Bloomquist the first batter of the game. There's one on second base. With the ball. Drew goes down off speed pitch. There's the strikeout. So Stephen O for three with a pair of strikeouts. You get a breaking ball down and away. The one thing I noticed, speaking of observing, was Kirk Gibson. And it was mainly, I wasn't very up close during the All Star game, but during the Home Run Derby, I was seated down on the field doing the hosting. And it was amazing to me how much he stood back in the shadows and watched everything. Watched players, how they interacted, walked around the outfield like he does as the manager. He has such a keen eye and he files things away. He does it the entire ball game. And it was fun watching him watch others during all star time. Well I think for him he looks at it in a different perspective because he's a manager now and he gets a read on a lot of these star players. 
because there's going to come a time where some of these superstar players are going to become old veterans out there. And these are the type of guys that you look for to help your ball club out. And he wants to know the personalities that a lot of these guys have when they're in these all-star games. One and one the count. He also had the unique opportunity doesn't say anything I would imagine respects as you said the questions you don't ask. But he watched the entire Giants coaching staff operate very closely and players. The team right now that sees Arizona bumping up against their bumper in the rearview mirror. Pitch is low three and one the count in Arizona fans the Diamondbacks can't control it the fans are rooting for the Padres tonight. Three to one is a score in that ball game. That game is in the fifth inning, top of the fifth. Months have come against Dustin Mosley. Players can't do anything about it. All right, pitches high ball four. Maybe the the big hope is that you chase this young man out of the ball game and just look at anybody different. Well, he's up to over a hundred pitches, so that phone in the bullpen is going to be ringing very shortly here. He has thrown 100 or more pitches in 12 of his 19 starts as high as 122 pitches this season. Clayton looking for his 10th win of the year. Here is Miguel Montero. Slices that one the other way. It's a base hit. Arizona. Finally gets that extra run. You better not make that out of third, Mr. Roberts. He's in there. A hustle advanced by Ryan Roberts. And Miguel hits it the way you said he should hit it earlier, Luis Gonzalez. And because of that, it's 6-1 to one now, the score. This is our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play. Yeah, and Miggy gets a pitch. He just kind of stays inside out and drives it the other way. You know, the interesting part to that play... Chris Young coming around third base. If he doesn't score here and he gets thrown out at third, that run does not count. Wow. So you lead base runners. What you're saying is you lead base runners busted every step. Yeah, because you don't know what that runner behind you is gonna gonna do. And there you saw Roberts taking a chance to get to third base. If he would have got thrown out, that run wouldn't have counted. Because Chris Young hadn't crossed home plate yet. And that play was pretty close and it looked like young coming around third. He thought he was going to coast in but you don't know what Roberts is going to do behind you and Roberts was taking a chance trying to get to third base. Yeah Ryan always. The riverboat gambler every time he plays Albert's left hander Guerrero is the right hander. Fastball pours it in there Kershaw with the last bit. Of gasoline in his tank. Still leads it by five, but a long ball could change that and change the face of this game. Pitch is high, an angry fastball overthrew it, one and one the count. And, and really, this is the first time that Kershaw's been any kind of jam out mm -hmm. there. He's really been coasting along. Aside from that first inning when he had a runner at third. Brandon Allen is on deck. Just added to the major league roster over the break. Was having a fine year. He looks at. Roberts he looks at Montero. He also looks at Xavier Nady and hopes to get a chance. See the pitch. 
Hicks. Right down Broadway, and Nady gets a good swing at it. You knew right away. Matt Kemp just dropped his head, watched it sail over his head. Fulton Holmes Homer, $150 to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. Sean Burroughs will pinch hit. When the decision was made the other day by Kirk Gibson, Kevin Towers, and his staff, the name Burroughs edged out the name of Willie Mo Pena, and Burroughs receives his first assignment now, coming off that bench in this role. And really, he's saving Brandon Allen. He pulled him back to try to save him for a later situation. Hopefully with runners in scoring position to try to get those winning runs to the plate. Big swing popped it foul late on it. Wow Xavier dating just another big hit late in the ball game, but most of those hits have not been homers. You talk about just his third homer of the season. Really, the Dodgers are trying to get through this inning with Kershaw because he's coming up fourth in the inning to try to try to send a pinch hitter out there. His pitch count way over 110. Burroughs goes down on strikes. An interesting ball game now. It may as well be two to nothing, which has a different feel to it. For Navy unloading on a ball into the balcony. That would have been fun in home run derby, huh? Backs and Dodgers presented by Bluebell Ice Cream. Something just screams hang in there. I mean, the numbers tell you hang in there. This didn't feel like that night. I mean, let's be honest, folks. You can put all the rally caps on you want, but it just didn't feel like that night. As Micah Owings now, let me pull out the uh, the quote from Kirk Gibson again. Micah Owings will try to with his solid 3.0 ADRA. What are those three words at home, folks? Say them along with me. Lock people down. Now it really matters, doesn't it, Gonzo? Yeah, it really does. It's up to Michael Owings right, Owings right now to just go out there and try to get his offense back in into the dugout, try to recuperate those two more runs. One and two the count. Well, you felt like 
the July 4th victory when the Diamondbacks were down 6 to 1 in Milwaukee would clearly be the win of the season. I mean, you felt like that couldn't be topped. If they can do this here, as you said, busting out the cobwebs mentally and physically against a pitcher that clearly had them befuddled. They had no clue about what Kershaw was doing, and understandably so. Now, there are two runs to go and three to take the lead, but if they can do it, that would top what happened July the 4th. Yeah, there's no doubt. You could see Kershaw was starting to tire right when he got to the 100 pitch count. Started leaving the balls a little bit up in the in the strike zone, and Nady made him pay for it with that big three-run homer. Juan Uribe didn't help at all. But then there were some timely hits after, and there was a key walk. A key walk by Ryan Roberts. He's talking with Ted Lilly over there, by the way. Lilly will pitch on Sunday. Breaking ball is low two and two the count meantime in San Diego the Giants have added another one they had a two run fifth inning four to one San Francisco leads San Diego that game's in the top of the sixth inning. Breaking ball popped foul and into the seats Lincecum has worked five innings and given up the one run and struck out five. Cody Ross hit his seventh homer of the year. Maloney continues to battle right here. We need Mike Owens to get through this hitter. Three and two the count. Pitches to this point to start him off. Yeah, he really is. He's thrown pitches in and out, up and down in the strike zone, and Loney continues to battle up there at the plate. Mike has given up just one run in his four appearances here in July. Outside, he walked him. So that one misses away. Well, that's what will frustrate a manager right there. You come out, you score four runs, try to get yourselves back in the ball game, then you walk the leadoff hitter. Deonor Navarro with Jamie Carroll waiting on deck. Goes to Bunt. Not a very solid attempt, so 0 and 1 is the count on Navarro. The Dodgers, to allow really anything runs wise, it took an error to get it started because their pitchers have been dealing. Coming in, the Dodgers pitching staff had given up one earned run in their previous 36 innings. And he was right there in the same boat. He's doing the same thing. So it was one earned run in 42 and a third before the runs crossed the plate. Punts that one. That's a good one. Michael with a flip makes the play, so the runner moves up a sack bunt. Hiroki Kuroda faces Ian Kennedy. That one's tomorrow. Joe Garajul of the Hall of Fame broadcaster will join me as the color analyst, which is always a treat, isn't it, folks? And then Mark Grace returns as a color analyst on Sunday as Ted Lilly will go toe to toe against Daniel Hudson. And excited to see Ian Kennedy, who stood in that all star bubble the final two or three weeks. Excited to see him get back to work. The rest of Ian Kennedy. 
Yeah, it's really unfortunate that he wasn't added onto that list because he really deserved to be there, especially looking at so many pitches that had thrown on Sunday that weren't able to throw during the All-Star game. It would have been very easy to add him, especially living here in Arizona and the, you know, playing for the Arizona Diamondbacks would have been a nice gesture. But I can promise you he will be keyed up when he pitches against those San Francisco Giants. Oh yeah, it's going to be fun to see him get back to work as that one is outside. Just soon do away with that rule that was just put in about as Aaron Miles, the veteran, waits on deck, that if you pitched on Sunday, you can't throw what would be on your throw day in an all-star game. Tom Candiotti has mentioned that a couple of times. Well, I think he's just going to be keyed up anyway because Bruce Bochy was the manager. Yeah, I would agree with that. And left him off. And there's a sense of pride out there for the players when you get left off an all-star list and you're you're in the same division as the manager that's going to be managing. So you want to go back out there and show him your worth as a starting pitcher out there. By the way, none of those runs were earned against Kershaw in the last inning. Like Jamie Carroll, Aaron Miles, a utility man that has made a nice career out of his efforts. Matter of fact, it's it's been about a decade in the major leagues for Miles. Initially an Astros 19th round pick in 1995. 34 years old now. As that fastball is lifted up into the seats. He was a White Sox. He was a Rocky. He was a Cardinal, a Cub, and it's a pinch hitter. He has been money in 11 tries. Here's a guy hitting 318 this season. That one is up and away. Have to leave that runner at third. Have to lock people down. Yeah, this is a big uh, pitch right here coming up, especially with that runner at third and a two run deficit that the D backs have. Outside, two and two, the count. It's pretty much moving fastball which runs all over the place or slider for Owings. It's like he's going to want to come in on him. In the center field Young is tracked and he goes and he gets it. Owings cleans it up. So will the comeback continue. Arizona with four in the last inning. He did lock those people down by the way.
Great. The Kirk Gibson and Chris Young bobbleheads given away next month at Chase. Get all remaining bobbleheads in the World Championship replica ring with the D backs Grand Slam giveaway pack. Boy, all of that put together. Each pack guarantees you one of each giveaway with no waiting in line, no matter what time you arrive at the park. Plus, you'll also get a $10 gift card from Circle K. I always love using that for snacks or filling up the tank. 602 462 4786. Or visit dbacks.com slash grand slam. Love it. Give me that ice cream. Nope, I'm an Dodger fan. You can't have any. Mike McDougal, who throws really, really hard and has kind of rebuilt his career in Los Angeles this year, is a tough assignment for these Diamondbacks. Yeah, he really does. He's a big, strong power pitcher, throws about 98 miles an hour. But what he does do, deceptive to the hitters, he has a herky jerky motion. 96 running in from McDougal. Oh, he throws a slider, a curve, and a change, but he relies mostly on that fastball. That's his bread and butter pitch. I think I would too with that arm. You're doing yourself a disservice. Plus, he gets a little bit of sink, it looks like. Willie trying to get things started. He's had a good night. He's been on three times. He's singled twice to right field. He's walked as well. One more time, they need you, Willie. Outside a breaking ball, which looks like kind of a show me pitch. I think that's just to get the hitter to think about it a little bit when he's got. Two strikes or later in the in the count. Defense just about straight up, except for in right field where they play Willie the other way. Three and one the count with Kelly waiting on deck. There's a buzz in this ballpark now because of what happened an inning ago with Xavier Nady's home run. Taking all the way, three and two the count. And that's a professional hitter right there. How many guys do you think would be standing up there taking on a 3 1 with McDougal up on the mound? Bouncing ball, racing over is for Paul, and he makes the play. A nice play there. Well, that would have gotten the wheels in motion again for Arizona, but for Paul, range is enough. So now Kelly. Kelly coming into this ball game had shown that he was starting to piece it together since late June. 289, nine of his 13 hits were extra base hits with 11 RBIs in 12 games. Tonight he's 0 for 3. Boy, tough to deal with. 0 and 1 the count. Sinker 97. Mr. McDougal looks like he's a, about 150 pounds soaking wet in the shower. Just a God gifted arm there. One and one the count. Well, I think as a hitter, you know that his fastball is his best pitch. You just have to sit on it and take everything else and just look for that one heater that you're going to get up in the strike zone. Homer. High round pick has been at it for quite some time whether it's been injuries or inconsistencies have plagued him as that one's inside. He was the Royals first round pick out of Wake Forest back in 1999. And with an arm like that he's got an ERA over four he had seasons in which the ERA was over five even over six. Pitch is high three and one the kill. Five walks per nine innings in his career, and that's what has plagued him. Well, you're Kelly. You know he's got to come after you. There's ball four. All right, now. As we were mentioning, those walks that can jump up and bite him. See if Justin Upton, who is... 
tried to pitch in tonight. He had a sack flyer, so he thought in the first. Matt Kemp threw out Willie Bloomquist at the plate. Had a base hit to center, or so he thought in the fourth. Matt Kemp went a great playoff. Well, if you're a baseball fan, this is what you want to see a power hitter against a power pitcher. Signs are ready. Rally caps are on. Put them on at home if you're watching. Boy, he showed him a good breaking ball there for strike one. Of course, he's going to throw a breaking ball. Complimentary numbers there, huh, folks? But his entire club represents those numbers. Six runs, eight hits, and an error for the Dodgers. Four runs, all in the seventh inning. Five hits, and an error for the Diamondbacks. Upton to right field. He is erased. Ethier hauls it in. I'll tell you, Navarro wanted that ball inside. He missed his spot. Just the sheer velocity was enough to beat Upton that time. That was out over the plate. Navarro sets up in. The ball goes out over the outer half of the plate. Upton just kind of got jammed a little bit on a 97 mile an hour fastball the other way. Looked like the approach was right, just couldn't square it up. All right, Chris Young. Oh, and one the count on CY. You picture CY in these late game situations. And the one thing you think is if McDougal should go to that breaking ball, it's been inconsistent. If you're visualizing and you're a fan with optimism, you can picture one of those hanging sliders going a long way. Well, Chris Young is the guy on this team that has come up with some big heroic home runs late, late in ball games. And he doesn't show him that slider. Instead, it's 98 below the knees. Reached on an error an inning ago. With seven home runs. Of his 16, nearly half have come in the seventh inning or later. Well, we'd like to make that total eight. There's that breaking ball. It was ugly, but it wasn't hung. It was in the dirt. Two and one the count. Back in 03, McDougal saved 27 games for the Royals. Ah, that was a good one on 2 1. A breaking ball, 2 and 2 of the count. That was wicked. Yeah, it really was. And I think Chris Young was guessing right there, looking for a fastball, just trying to get the bat head out. He starts to commit, realizes it's a breaking ball, and it was too late. Sometimes hitters do that. They get out there, they try to guess on a pitch, and if they get it, they don't miss it. And that time he guessed wrong. Only the St. Louis Cardinals have scored more innings. From the sixth inning on this year, in the Arizona Diamondbacks. Got in enough though, didn't it? 
He got it in, but I think Chris Young was trying to protect, looking middle away. There you see it on the inner half. Chris Young just gets enough of it to foul it off. Kind of turned over a bit. Two and two, the count. Breaking ball, he jumped on that one, didn't he? He's starting to zone in on the bender now. Let's see if he sees a fastball. He just, we've watched Chris Young over the years, haven't we, folks? That's the pitch you can picture him jerking right out of here. Yeah, he knows, he knows what his buddy does damage on. Take a little Texas leaguer, by the way, anywhere out there, too. Young reached on an error, line to right, and struck out. The breaking ball out front. Our Kia text poll. Your favorite moment. And there are so many good ones there. Nothing is the wrong answer, but you loved Heath Bell coming, charging in and sliding when he was introduced into the All Star game. Yes, sir. Well done, Heath Bell. A grand entrance to say the least. You loved it. There were there's no wrong answer to that one, just like there has been no wrong way to praise the journey of Alberto Castillo from Cuba in his mid 30s now and through many a stop in the independent leagues. We had a great conversation with him on the last road trip. And Alberto's done very good work out of the bullpen, the veteran, 36 years old for the Diamondbacks. Into the dirt quickly 2 and 0 though to Rafael for call. So one last chance for Arizona and again. Mr. Gibson says you got to lock people down here. And make that one last chance matter. Back to the screen it goes 2 and 1 the count. Oh a nice job of coming right back Adam Castillo does right there and he. He's got a very he's very deceptive. He changes a lot of arm angles when he's out there on the mound. The two one. Two and two the count the Giants have added another run. And that game's in the top of the seventh inning with San Francisco leading San Diego. Five to one. 
Let's come still in there. Swing and a miss. Boy, nasty stuff. Great comeback, as you mentioned. Or here you see him right there, a nice breaking pitch down and in to get for a call. Really rebounded after going two balls and no strikes to for a call and coming right back and striking him out. And you know, Darren, I think for us, the key is I know we're going to be scoreboard watching the rest of the season here because we're close enough to the Giants. We haven't been in this situation in the last two years. Closing the gap. Fine play by Young. That was a lot of ground. Continue your thoughts, sir. In the last two years, but the key for the Diamondbacks is to just go out there and continue to play their style of baseball and win their games. When they play head-to-head -head against the Giants, that's when those are the must-win games because then you can leapfrog those guys. You just have to worry about yourself and try to stay within those games close enough to the Giants because you know you have enough games left to play against them. Well, you're right. You can take a peek at the scoreboard, but that, as you mentioned, you can only control what you can do, and you win your games. Well, there you see the deceptive angle right there. He just dropped down on Andre Ethier. That pitch is outside. One and one the count. Reminds me of a guy who used to pitch a long time ago by the name of John Candelaria. He was about 6'9. Oh. Broken back grounder. There's a lot of old left handed hitters that just got sick to their stomach when you mention that name. <laughs> Drew Roberts Montero looking for some late game magic right after this. Southwest Airlines new rapid rewards unlimited reward seats with no blackout dates Sonic America's drive-in it's new it's better it's the new Sonic good quest five-year price lock promise visit quest.com slash promise for details To the bottom of the ninth inning, the Diamondbacks have journey. It's been an improbable one representing their season because it felt like they were going to be really quieted tonight from the beginning till the end. Well, that wasn't about to happen. They scored four. It's a 6 4 game. They scored those four in the seventh inning. The journey back has been one that the Dodgers have pulled hard for for their teammate Hung Chi Kuo, who earlier this year battled an anxiety disorder and the struggles put him on the disabled list. He just makes his 18th appearance of the year. But Diamondbacks fans, you know Hung Chi Kuo well enough to know that as he pulls himself back together and does so more between the ears than he does with the arm, that he's about as tough of a left-handed pitcher as there is in the game. 
Yeah, he really is. He's a hard throwing lefty. And here you have, once again, Drew leading off against a tough left hander. And Steven says, gee, thanks a lot for this assignment. Tries the bunt, pitches high for Quo, as we mentioned. He was reinstated from the DL on June 19th, five and two thirds innings over eight appearances, and opponents hit just 227 against him. Also battled some back problems earlier this year. He's had a lot of injuries throughout his career. But the key for Quo has been when he's been healthy. Because when he's been healthy, like here at Chase, 17 and a third innings, no runs. That means never. So they've got to break the mold on how he's pitched at this ballpark, these Diamondbacks do. One and two, the count in those 17 and a third innings in this ballpark, 31 strikeouts. Yeah, and, and Quo is a typical lefty. He likes to throw middle away to left handers. Very rarely does he come inside. Kind of crossfires to the left handed hitters. He also likes to throw that slider down and away. There's the spoiling of the good slider down and away. So the count is one and two. Yeah, that's a great play, by the way. Fan made a play. Dodger fan visiting. Protected his lady friend there as well with that play. 29 year old time when he's born left hander deals it. Steven pops it up a mile toward that roof. One away as that one is put to bed by Raphael for call. Don't forget our post game show. We will. Break this ball game down. It came much closer, and you hope that there's some interesting things beyond the 6 4 final. You hope that Arizona can fight against Quo and get a few more out there. Time with the Dodgers back in 99. And Roberts takes a ball that cuts in and out of that catcher's bit, it goes. Ryan tonight. He singled in the fifth inning, but had a real key walk back in the seventh, didn't he? Yeah, he really did. He's really the, the jump starter to get that rally going. Where Miguel Montero followed with the single. Patiently takes that one. Father and son in that shot a moment ago. Dad with the New school lid on, son with the old school helmet on. That's a great shot there. Nope, inside. Looked like a pretty good pitch. Three and oh is the count. With Miguel Montero waiting on deck. You got to believe Robert's going to have the take sign right here. There it is, ball four. So Roberts with now two walks late in the ball game. Arizona hoping it adds up to another rally. Miguel Montero now again the unenviable task of facing Hong Chi Kuo as a left-handed hitter. And Miggy takes the same approach because Quo's going to throw him middle away. Got to try to shoot that ball to left field. Did that against Kershaw, right? He did. Fresh in his mind, I would imagine. You hope so. Outside corner, there's the slider you taught us about. What Miggy can't do, he can't try to get up there and try to swing for that two run homer because he's not going to get that pitch inside. Quo's going to make him beat him the other way. The outfield plays him the other way. There's a ton of room in right center field, but that makes sense. Oh, and two the count. Montero's faced Quo four times. He's two of four against him. 
The other two times have been strikeouts. And now he's got to protect because he knows Crow throws that hard slider. And Needy waits on deck. And you ask yourself, can he do it again? One and two the count. Montero as we mentioned was behind the plate was supposed to hit. But his spot came up he did not get the hit in his final inning of. Offensive play for the National League he was behind the plate for the final and winning inning for the National League in the All Star game. Outside corner. Frozen there I think he was looking breaking ball. So now Xavier Nady and it's Nady that has us on the edge of our seat because it's Nady as that fastball rips the outside corner that hit a three run home run back in the seventh inning. And Nady has seen Quo before as a matter of fact he's seen him in eight plate appearances. And he might not see him now because he has got three hits a homer against him and two walks. And the bullpen, bullpen I should say, Javi Guerra, who has been closing for these Dodgers, he will come on and look to finish things up. Strikeout followed a huge chance for Xavier Nady, who had a three run homer to make this game a ball game. And Javi Guerra, who has seized the opportunity, young man out of Ryan High School in Denton, Texas. And a chance to continue in his role as Dodgers closer, four for four in his save opportunities. First big league save coming this season as he pours that one in there. And it's not a lot of run over. 11 of his appearances. Well, he can get his fastball up too, to 91 to 97 miles an hour. He's got a fastball on a slider. His slider is his money pitch to the right handed hitters. 04 draft pick out of high school. Finally earned his way here to the majors. Bouncing ball, middle of the diamond, and into center field. Hustling on to third, aggressively running the bases is Roberts. Welcome back to the big leagues, Brandon Allen. A huge opportunity for Allen now. And I would imagine a guy that he has seen before along the minor league circuits. A beautiful approach there by Nady. Yeah, it really is. He gets a ball out over the plate. 
strokes it right back up the middle. Doesn't try to do too much. Now puts the Diamondbacks in a good situation with Brandon Allen up at the plate. Allen with five major league home runs during his time. This year in the minor leagues, putting up very good numbers all around. 306. Pitches inside, 1 0 the count. The impressive thing about Allen, along with the 306, if you look at the triple slash line, 306, 427 on base, 579 slug in Reno. Well, we'd like to welcome Allen back in a big way right here. A nice walk off would be a nice, nice thing to do here. Anything to keep this rally going. 18 long balls this year for Allen in the minor leagues in AAA. Kirk Gibson praising that Allen, who did not enjoy receiving the assignment and the demotion at the end of spring training, handled it tough, he said, that he went about his business once he went down. In. Like a cut fastball in on his hands. One and one the count. Gets the lay of the land from Matt Williams, third base coach. Eric Young keeps an eye on Nady. Two and one the count. Again, a great eye this year. More than anything that you lean upon in AAA. And showing a lot of patience right there for a guy who just got called up. His first plate appearance back to the major leagues. And to take close pitches like that, it just goes to show you how much he's developed. He's now 25 years old. That was his pitch. Would love another shot at that one, two and two. Just got in on him. Great crowd tonight. They're coming out of their seats while Allen steps out. Outside strike three. And that's the ball game. So a frustrating end to that one. It just got enough of that outside corner. And the young man, Javi Guerra, is now a perfect five of five. Fastball down. Late reaction from the home plate umpire for strike three. We've got a lot to talk about in this postgame show, including Brandon Allen. Coming back to the big leagues, what his role will be. These Diamondbacks getting back to work and by possibly losing a game in the standings tonight with San Francisco leading San Diego by a score of 6-1 to one in the seventh inning. We'll talk about all of that in the postgame show. You can see the standings right now. Arizona with work to do again tomorrow. 25,000 loud fans here. Kudos to you fans. A great atmosphere tonight. We'll talk about all that in the postgame show right after the commercial break. Thank you.